Hi there. In this video I'm going to be going over some more advanced materials um, which make use of composite maps um, for the purpose of uh, giving variation to your textures and also applying things like decals um, to your textures. Um, so let me show you what I've got set up here. I've just got a basic um, material, standard material. Um, we've just got a brick texture and normal map in a standard material. Nothing too fancy at all. Uh, and I've got a few other textures set up ready for me to go. Um, I can show you those quickly. Um, we've just got a um, uh, sort of noise kind of uh, texture. Um, I've got a uh, leaky, grungy texture which um, also has on the alpha channel um, a, a, a transparency. So um, that'll, that'll be useful for when we apply that to the wall. And just a kind of graffiti thing that I'm going to use as a decal. Um, which also has transparency. Okay, um, in no particular order then, let's um, let's show just basic uh, decal. Uh, so I'm going to move this up to the top here. Um, and we're going to be modifying the diffuse um, color here. Essentially we're just painting uh, color to the wall. We're not modifying the normal map or anything like that. Um, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to put, place this on top of this texture here. Uh, I perhaps should have said um, this is tiling right now, you probably guessed, but um, the tiles are uh, four of these little squares. Um, so there's you know two rows and uh, I think maybe uh, six um, columns of this tile. Um, so let's see what happens if we use a simple composite map um, to sort of blend these two together on the diffuse channel. So I'm just going to drag out from here, release, maps, composite. Okay, this is not a composite material, this is a composite map. Okay. Um, and I'm actually not going to choose one for here because I want the brick texture to be my base. I'm going to double click on that and just add a new layer. And then I'm going to drag this down to layer two. So this is now being applied on top of this one. Let's use that for our diffuse and see what happens. Okay. Um, and let's render that as well. So we've got uh, we've got our face repeating a lot of times, um, which probably you didn't want. Um, so the quick but not really maybe what you wanted fix for that is just to uh, untick tiling on this. Now this doesn't actually update in the viewport, which is a bit of an annoyance, but um, this does sort of work. And you can see it's just on one tile. Uh, but what happens if we don't want it on that tile? Um, and what happens if we want to place it in a completely different spot and maybe rotate it and stuff like that without rotating our bricks? Okay, well we can do that, we just need to use a second UV channel. So let's um, go ahead and do that, uh, just to hide the material browser for a moment. Um, so select my object and, uh, whoops, that's not there, you didn't see that. Um, let's now unwrap. However, we're going to, um, before we start modifying it, we're going to scroll down to where it says um, channel, and we're going to change map channel to 2, and it's going to ask us do we want to uh, move or abandon. Now, I haven't changed anything here, so uh, it probably doesn't actually really matter too much, um, but I'll go abandon. Um, so now this unwrap modifier is dealing with uh, channel 2. Okay, so let's uh, open the editor and start playing around with that. now. Um, I'm going to change the material first, so maybe we can see a bit what's going on, but uh, I've got a feeling this doesn't actually update in the viewport anyways, but um, we'll do it anyhow. So all I'm going to do is select the um, the map itself um, and change the map channel to 2 here. So as you see here, we've got a map channel. Now, now that that's on 2, that will use the coordinates from uh, the UV um, channel 2. Um, but I don't think this is going to update because that would be too easy and you don't want easy because that would be, be boring. Um, okay, so uh, that's, I've just moved that a little bit and let's see what ha effect that has. So you can see already we've now um, moved the face to a different part of the texture and indeed we can scale it differently. This was already scaled slightly differently because it, uh, I abandoned changes. So we can scale it and we can rotate it as well. So um, let's put it at uh, somewhere there, I guess. Remember, my face is basically this square here, um, so the unwrap here will um, will place it 
we've got a luck somewhere about there. Um, moment of truth. There we go. So that's kind of a cool spot for it. Um, we'll go with it there. Uh, we can close that and we can still collapse this down. That's uh, not a problem. The editable poly can store several channels of unwrap. Um, so that's that's all cool. All right, so that's some um, basic um, decals. Okay, so besides decals, why else might we want to use a composite map? Well, let's say we've got a uh, heavily recurring pattern uh, as we have here. And just for the moment, I'm going to um, get rid of this. Uh, and let's take a look at this texture. Um, we can, it's, it's not a bad um, texture. It's not too obviously repeating. Um, but maybe you've got a texture which which does repeat fairly obviously, and you want to kind of hide that a bit, or just simply add a bit of variation to the to the texture. Um, rather than making a really enormous map um, just for the sake of a little bit of variation, what you could do is uh, use some sort of noise um, texture, um, and I'm just going to basically replace what I've been doing here. So we're no longer going to have this decal, but uh, you know how to do that now. And um, I'm going to plug this in, just as I did before, to another composite map. And this is going to make a bit, bit of a mess of it here, but uh, don't worry about that. And instead of using normal as a blending mode, I'm going to try using overlay. Okay. Now what that's doing there is you can see it's breaking it up. Um, I've got this, uh, I don't know how many, uh, what tiling I've got this on. Yeah, I've got it on a sort of random amount of tiling. Um, but most significantly, it's it's not the same number, which means that my, uh, if you like, my squares are not in the same places. If I were to disable this, you can see what I mean. Now, ignore the preview, which is a load of rubbish. Um, this is what it actually does look like. And you can see that the, the tiles are not in the same places, so it's, uh, you know, just a different bit of variation to break that up. And you could make this even smaller if you wanted um, to... Uh, have larger um, sort of blobs going on here, you see. Um, so uh, let's put that brick in. We can see what that's doing. So you can see it's uh, adding different bits of variation. It's really hard to tell now where the, uh, the tiling is actually taking place. So that's a neat, neat little trick for, um, and that's very cheap for if, you, if you're talking about um, a real time. Um, uh, real-time rendering. This is uh, much cheaper than having such a big texture um, because you're, you're using the same small texture once and this is very blurry. It's a very small texture. I don't know, 256, 256. It's, it's not big at all but because we've got nice detail in the brickwork it doesn't matter that we're blowing this uh, tiny little texture up to being huge. Uh, that's not a problem. Um, so that's another use. Um, finally, let's uh, make use of these leaky walls. So this is probably the most sort of complex of them all so far and I'm going to do a couple of couple of things with this. Um, but let's just plug it in as is. Now the problem we've got is, um, like I said before, we've got two rows going on here. And um, at the minute I've just uh, got the same um, tiling as the other one, uh, as, as the bricks underneath. Um, but we can't solve this problem by simply, uh, you know, stopping tiling. Well, actually we probably could um, by not tiling one of them. But let's say for argument's sake we can't stop this problem because you know, we render it and we've only got one uh, one tile and we actually want it to go all the way across. We um, So we need the tiling on. Okay, but we need somehow to stop it from being applied to these bottom polygons. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. First one I'm going to show you is a multi-sub object, which is in some ways the simplest, uh, but it just looks a little bit of a mess, so um, bear with me here. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to copy this whole material down but this bottom material, I'm not going to have the decal, the, uh, the leaky um, stuff going on. So we've just got uh, more simple material. The material we actually started with um, down here. Um, so let's just compare those. So selecting that object and applying it. Um, you can see we've just got, we're back to our regular brick texture. Okay. Let's um, now go out from this material. Either material, doesn't matter, we can... So that in a second. And we're going to make a new type of material called a multi-sub object. Now you've probably used these before, but um, this is now we're using it with most of the same textures. The only difference being that we've not got a composite on one and we have on the other. I'm just going to change this down uh, to two because it's just silly having ten of them. And plug in the second one into the second channel. A second ID rather. Um, so we've now got these two materials, one with the decal, one without. Uh, in the same material. So let's apply this to our um, object. 
Now, of course, at the moment, um, it's all using, well, all of these polygons are set to ID 1. But if we just uh, select the bottom lot and change those um, to ID 2, um, somewhere in here, set ID to 2, you can see now that it's using the uh, material which is um, which has not got the, um, the decal on it, and that gives the pretty much the effect that we're after. Cool. Um, the other way of doing it, so I'm just going to delete all of that and apply that to my object again. The other way to do it is to use a different type of um, of of masking. Rather than using a texture to mask it, we're going to use um, vertex colors. So let me show you the wireframe here, um, just so we can see where our vertices are. Now I've added in a little bit more geometry than I really need. Um, that's probably not a problem for um, for, for the small cost um, that this is. This is going to be basically a lot cheaper than having a whole um, texture just devoted to uh, the mask. Um, because we're only storing a very few number of points of data, just one colour for each of these, you know, that's the equivalent of a four by um, whatever that is, texture, very small texture. And the uh, extra polygon cost for um, for a wall like this is, is, is pretty negligible. So um, let's go ahead and start painting some vertex colours. So uh, just to help me see what's going on, I'm going to make a new type of map. I'm going to choose uh, from near the bottom, vertex colour and I'm going to plug that into my diffuse. Now to start with, uh, my vertex color is going to be, ooh, apparently it's going to be bright pink. Uh, that's uh, a little surprising. Um, but that's possibly because I've been messing around with this object already. Yours might already be white. Um, but let's just proceed anyway. Um, I wonder what channel I was painting on. Mm, don't know. Yeah, anyway, let's start using the red channel. So how do we change the vertex colors? Okay, uh, now that we can see them, let's add a new uh, modifier called vertex paint. And we get a new uh, dialog here with uh, some, some new, new controls. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple right now. I'm just going to paint. Uh, I can click here to change my color. I'm going to use black or white. I'm going to start with black. Uh, and I'm going to start painting in. And I'm basically going to paint um, this lot to be totally black because we didn't want um, our texture there. So that's basically masking off that bottom lot that we don't want. But another benefit of the vertex painting is um, you have control over the opacity of stuff above it. So I'm just going to set the opacity down a little and start um, just sort of breaking up the uniformity of it. So, uh, you know, some certain bits are not showing through as much as others. Um, and maybe just shorten some of these as well. You know, so uh, we've got some variation now in uh, how that top row is going to look. Okay, that's good. Um, let's now go back and change the way this is looking. So we're not particularly interested in making that our diffuse color. Let's pop this uh, back so that we're back in um, the, the view we were just looking at. Uh, I'm done with vertex painting for now. Um, so we need to mask um, this somehow using the vertex color. Now, um, I'm already using, I perhaps should have explained this, the alpha channel of this texture to uh, to mask off what we've got here, otherwise it would just be all green. Um, so now we need to combine the, the alpha mask of this texture. In fact, I can show you that. Um, here you go, this is what that looks like. Um, you'll notice it's actually a, uh, a two to one ratio texture. Um, so we're going to use the uh, mask from that with the vertex color. Um, so let's grab the vertex color and go into a composite map. Okay, so we've already got the vertex color on the top layer. Now as our mask, I'm just going to duplicate this. So we've got uh, this texture again and make sure that uh, on this one where our uh, monochannel output is alpha and we're alpha is gray so we're now you can see in the preview window where we're using the just the alpha of it and we're going to use this as the mask in the composite let me zoom in for you because you probably can't see a damn thing um, so now we're we're using this as a mask for the vertex color and this itself is going to be our mask for 
the text there. And I really cannot explain why it looks like this in the viewport. It's bonkers, but it's the same with, um, I tried both the, this is 2012, and I tried both the Nitrous viewport and the Direct 3D, and they're both just bonkers. But give it a render, and what do you got? Uh, let's zoom in for you. Um, so that looks like it's barely even using it. Is that using it at all? Doesn't look like it, does it? Hmm. Give me one moment. Okay, uh, I made a bit of a mistake there. Uh, that is actually working fine. I just hadn't painted quite uh, aggressively enough, so I just painted a little bit more black, and, and you can clearly see that it's uh, hidden there. Uh, I should have figured out that it was working simply because uh, this bottom bit isn't showing. Um, but of course, you can use um, vertex painting for lots of different things. You can even use it to um, color a little bit like we used that noise map for, um, just to, to break up ver um, to add a bit of variation and break up a, a texture. Um, so a few techniques there. Hopefully, um, you got a better understanding of decals and stuff, um, and a few different ways of, of using them, either as uh, multi sub objects um, or simply uh, preventing them from tiling. Um, or using vertex paint to uh, mask off any of the bits that you want. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.